know, people, people, a lot of people liked our last segment when we had told the little story of Busy Bones. So we have another one. Uh -huh. This one's from DJ Quick. Okay. Talking about working with Dr. Dre. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Dre. What up, Dre? Hey, Quick, come to the studio. I like that track you did for Truth. <laughs> Get to the studio. Hook this up. He was like, it need one thing. You know, Dre. Put some percussion on it. He chew his gum real hard. He work out. You know, we call it Stretch Armstrong. He all super buff and shit. Put some percussion on it. I'm like, hell yeah. So I go in there. I'm playing tambourine. I'm patting this thing. He was like, play it another way. Whatever way you want. Just different. All right. So I start going. I was like, hey, how you, you like this? I'm like, Joo. he was like, yeah, that's cool. He was like, do it again. He said, go on quick. You on it. You on it. So I'm like, I'm doing all, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it fast. So I'm popping that motherfucker. Time going by. And it was like, all right, just do a couple more times and we cool. I was like, oh, this is what they was talking about. Dre is a slave driver. So I'm doing this tambourine. This shit's going on for about an hour. I'm in there sweating and shit. Motherfucker bells fall off. But hold on, Dre. Just get another one. Oh my God! <laughs> so we got to the last one. I'm like, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Dre was like, I think we got it. <laughs> What's the song? It's Tooth Hurts. Well, <laughs> well, I heard, well, so when he said that I like the thing you do with Truth Hurts, I thought that Dre called him because he liked that and wanted something else. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Like No, he I wanted him to finish doing some more stuff on that song. Got it. Uh, yeah, got that it. was his artist, wasn't it? Yep, that was yep. that was Dre's yeah. artist. Got it, got it. <laughs> I get it. I get that. I understand. Yeah. I like the fact you call him Stretch Armstrong. DJ Quick is hilarious and doesn't yeah. And and he doesn't look like he's aged at all. Mm -hmm. He still look like 1991. Yeah. <laughs> and still looking like he's with the guest jeans a lot. Like he, like even after the uh, just like Compton, and and I've had debates with people. I feel like, dude, he wasn't dissing St. Louis and just like Compton. He only dissed one city, Denver, at the end. That's the only. Right. He didn't diss St. Louis. He just said that. Um, the niggas is wild. <laughs> he said it was just like Compton. He doesn't mention like he mentions the Smith Center. He doesn't mention what happened. But he, uh, but he mentions that, uh, yes. that he was there, but and Gus and all that. But he doesn't. He just said it was just like Compton. Like it was like it was niggas fighting and, and shit. And it was like yeah. he, said, he, said, he, said, he said bloods and Crips start strapping and fighting in, in Missouri. Like that. Missouri? How, How did, did this happen? happen? <laughs> <laughs> and look, it is so crazy. I, I saw DJ Quick at the gas station in like two thousand, beamed up too, read it up. Like I'm like. This is real and terrible, luxurious. I'm talking about luxurious. <laughs> this is the old Amico before it was a BP, y'all. That was the Amico, and he was oh, pulled, pulled up, got him some gas. This is 2000. Ah, uh, yeah. Because he used to be in St. Louis a lot. He had a lot of people in St. Yeah, Louis. He was he was St. Louis. Yeah. Everybody, write this down. America, the people that are watching, people talk bad about St. Louis, but people are like, these artists are always there. They may not mm -hmm. be on tour, but they're there hanging out. They got a baby mama there. Every every artist got a baby mama in St. Louis. Yeah. I don't yes. know. I yeah. think St. Louis is the capital of rapper baby mamas. I think 100%. I think, <laughs> I think every rapper has a baby mama. And R&B stars, too. Yeah, that's a celebrity baby mom. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's like <laughs> pretty much your celebrity, your celebrity, your BM more than likely lives in St. Louis, and not just the black ones. <laughs> not just the black ones. Like, and so. if she live in Atlanta, she from St. Louis. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that boy. Like um, like y'all know old girl Gail Beans from St. Louis. I didn't know that's that. On, uh, that's on Snowfall. Snowfall. Yeah, I didn't know that. Exactly. Well, she didn't. Grow, I mean, she moved there when she was like ten or eleven to to Atlanta. Oh. Okay, but her parents were St. Louis, like SZA, like SZA from St. Louis. Yep. <clears throat> Allegedly, yeah, she was. Uh, she was from Maplewood, I believe, right? But That's what like, I heard. Uh, I'm not sure what part. But I think she was like what, just like literally, like just born here, and then that was yeah. it. Yeah. So but she grew up in Jersey. She grew up in Jersey. That's what I'm saying, right? It's a. 
I'm always weird about that when it's like people are like, oh, well, I'm from such oh, such. I'm thinking she moved to Jersey like as a teenager. Oh, no, no, she no. moved here a year or two, maybe a year or two or something. No, nah, like, so yeah. for me, like, so example, Kanye was born in Atlanta, but he it's moved to Chicago, Chicago when he was three. So he grew up in Chicago. So I would never, I'm not going to claim Atlanta for Kanye and he's not going to claim it. Like, that's, that's it. But it's people that, literally moved somewhere when they were like 20 years old and they'd be like oh yeah i'm from here no you're not you that is not where you mm-hmm. for me it's like where you where'd you go to high school at like where where was that part of your life you like one of them military kids that just right. moved around a lot right then you're from everywhere like you, yeah, you don't really yeah. have that but be like oh yeah yeah I'm, 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 that's where i'm from um you've been here longer than you were there Mm-hmm. Like especially when you get to that point, like dude, you've been here, like you moved here when you were five. You are forty. <laughs> Quit telling folks you're from Jersey. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's real. And quit telling folks you're from Jersey. But quick man, he's always a funny dude. And this interesting with that song is that I don't think none of them get publishing on that song. I hated that song because of the uh, Indian. Um, um, it was actually, and it was actually a TV show that he took it from because he's because uh, the quick tells the story. He woke up, he was walking doing something, and he was like, "What the hell is that?" And he said he basically got a taping of it <laughs> and just used it and flipped it. That I, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I really, I never liked that song. Like it's from the first time I heard it, I was like, "Why." What is this? It I was cool. It was, it was cool. Right. It, it's the rock. If the, if the thing was that rock Kim, you hadn't heard from rock Kim in so long, I believe yeah. that's that the thing the that put people in. Yeah, yeah you hadn't heard rock Kim for years. Track. Yeah, and you was like, oh snap, rock Kim thinking of a master plan. Like, oh, did, start, did she have another single? Didn't she have another? Yes, single? with the great R. Kelly. That's what it was. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> The name of the song, I hold on. I remember the song. It was an actually decent song too. Um hey, I remember the video. Yeah, wait a minute. So it says the yeah, Static Major wrote the song lyrics and the record was produced by DJ Quick. Quick sample for its instrumental track, a Hindi song he heard on television early one morning. The sample uh turned out to be the Thoda Rasham Lagata I, a nineteen eighty one song by an Indian singer. Um, do, 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 which aftermath neglected to clear the rights to copyright <laughs> holders. Sarah Gamma India Ltd issued a cease and desist order, which went unheeded. On September 12, 2002, Sarah Gamma filed a $500 million lawsuit against Aftermath and Parent Company University Music Group and filed an injunction to prevent further performances or broadcasts of the addictive song. Mm. Um, and th- at the end of 2002, Slant ranked the single the ninth best of the year and jokingly awarded it the title of best use of an illegal sample. Because this song was big. I remember hearing it, it was big, the video man. all the time. And I was angry every time it came <laughs> out. I was I, like, I'd be like, y'all gotta be, y'all killing me. Like, there's no way that everybody likes this song. Like, I, it, really? it just. They stayed on 106 for a minute. I probably for that whole summer almost. <laughs> Yeah, like just, nope, 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 nope. Now, I believe True Person went to your high school, Stacy. Who did? Truth hurts. She went to what high school? Sodan, I believe. Didn't you go to Sodan? I attended. I went there. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I attended. <laughs> you must have came out in the early 90s. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think she's in the late 80s. I'm like, I she had, like, like, so here's the thing. Depending 80s. on, like, how old is she? She, she came out in 89 because she was born in 71. Right. So she came out. Well, so that's before it was a magnet school. So that's before yeah, it even yeah, shut yeah. down. So Sodan shut down mm-hmm. and then reopened 93 as international studies. Yeah, that's it was shut I, down for about, what, two, three years? Yeah, so like, yeah, that's oh, so she was the last class, maybe, and then it closed. Possibly was the last class, like I said, they reopened 93 as a magnet school because my brother ended up leaving Lindbergh and transferred there and did his last two years there at Sodan. I ended up doing my last two years there, and then my sister did all four years there, and Brenda went there. So, um, we actually are a a legacy family on accident. <laughs> Dang, you know, yeah, that's I didn't even know that. I didn't know it shut down for a while. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it like it, yeah. they built the gym. They built that new gym, didn't they? Wasn't the gym considered kind of new? That I don't know. 
But I like, like, but I do know that when they reopened their doors, they opened up as a magnet school because yeah. before that they were just a neighborhood school. West side, that was a school for all the West Side kids. Yeah, that was the West Side kids. Hey, this cool ass Scott from the I Love Nineties Music Podcast. Hit that subscribe button right now. Like it on the SOLC Network. You finna get all the real deal on the nineties, the two thousands, and the splash of that eighties. Do it right now, man, and I'll be your friend.